Mike, welcome to the Jiggy Garcia podcast. Uh, yeah. I like to have interesting people, and I think you're interesting because you have an online business, right? Why don't I you do, tell yeah. us what you do uh, and how you started? Okay, so uh, my business is Mboards, and back when I named the business, I was barely, you know, trying to figure things out, and I literally just took the first letter of my name and pushed it together with boards, and there we go. So now that's how we got our name. Um, so originally, I started this back in 2017, back when I was like a sophomore in college. Um, I was going to UNLV at the time, and I really, you know, the campus is big. I want an electric skateboard, and at the time, like the only like main one that was worth buying was a boosted board, and it was like, yeah. like 1,500 bucks at the time. And I'm just like, as a broke college kid, you know, I had a beater car. I'm like, I can't be dropping. I mean, that's how much my car was worth at the time. I can't be dropping 1,500 dollars on a skateboard. I'm like, what if I don't even like it, you know? So I built one. I, I did all the research. I yeah, poured through the forums, found a few YouTube videos. And I built one for like 600 bucks that went faster and farther than our actual boosted board. Um, made a video about it and it blew up. It got like 500,000 views. I'm like, oh shit. Like, wow. whoops. Like I was, you know, I was doing like little vlogs and little videos and stuff, trying to like get YouTube to like be something for me. And I was like, oh my gosh, like got like 10,000 subscribers overnight. I'm like, holy hell, this is something big. So all of a sudden comment after comment after comment can you build me a board can you build me a board i'm like well i guess like i built the first one why can't i build another one so i was like all right i'll i start a little website i'm like you could you know select a few different customizations um you know i would take payment a couple of weeks later i'd buy all their parts put it together and send it out and i did that for a while like a, like three to four months i built like 15 20 boards you know made like a couple hundred like two maybe 300 bucks each time really was just supplementing like a little bit of income. I was living at home at the time, like just to pay like for school and stuff, you know, nothing big. But you know, I was just building so many of them. I was like, God, this is, it was a hobby and now it's a job. And I'm like, this is like, I'm bit burnt out. Like how many of these things am I gonna build? Like, yeah. I don't know, like how, cause it would take me all day. I mean, at the time, like I, I'm much more experienced now, but at the time I was like, it would take me two days to get one board done, which seems, seems like a long time. And it felt like a long time. And I'm like, I don't know, like, I feel like this is a long time. so. I was like, you know what? I'm gonna just make a few videos. I'm gonna just show people how I do it. And then I'll just get the parts together for everybody. And I'll just give them an easy place to just get the parts in one area. I'll make, you know, a little bit less than I was before, but then I don't have to do anything. And then I can just help people customize. And that was the biggest thing. There was nothing on the market that was custom yet. Everything was a boosted board or like nothing. I mean, they're really, I mean, Evolve was there still. Evolve was there. But other than that, nothing, everything was pretty expensive at the time. Like that was almost four years ago now. So a yeah. lot has changed since then, but I did that and it like tripled my, inc like my, uh, my sales in one month. I'm like, Oh, okay. Well, this is starting to be like a little, still very little money, but side business. Okay. Uh, we're yeah. getting there. I'm like, all right, well, I'll just, every time people would ask, Hey, do you have this? Do you have that? I'm like, well, I don't have that in my store, but I could get it. And I would go and I'd order a few and I'd, you know, and I, as we went, we ordered more and more of different things at higher quantities and. And we grew so fast that like I was having trouble keeping up with stuff. I'm like, it was wild. So now we're at a point where it's just a big at that same idea, but at a much, much larger scale. Um, we've actually, um, I've, I mean, I'm pretty much self-taught on everything. So like I, I, you know, I learned batteries actually, like how like my original boards, I'd actually build the batteries from 18650s. I actually mm. used quite a few of your tutorials um, <laughs> to figure out how to do that. I mean, yours, a few other people's, but really, I mean, I, de I definitely stumbled across your videos multiple times learning what the hell at 18650 was. I mean, really, I was starting from nothing, um, which yeah. is wild because like I was selling these things. <laughs> like, and I wasn't really at the time, four years ago, 100% sure what I was doing. I mean, enough where I could get a pack together and I understood how the BMS worked and why it was there and how the, the pack was put together. But in the grand scheme of battery knowledge, very, very little, really. Um, I knew what I was putting in the boards was enough to, to do what it wanted to do. But other than that, like I was just learning constantly just consuming as much YouTube as I could. And now we're at a point where, you know, I've taught my a little bit taught myself a little bit of, you know, 3D software and CAD modeling and I've, you know, we produced we just came out with a, a set of custom trucks that we designed ourselves and All right. uh, getting everything made and dealing with factories. And now I don't really make too much of anything, but I you know, I'm here to help and I'm I'm here to answer questions and, and give people the free knowledge because four years ago there was a very serious lack of YouTube videos. There was nothing. I mean, I was like struggling yeah. trying to figure out how the hell to build one of these things. And it took me months to figure out 
you know, parts list. And even when I got my parts list, it still did not work right. So I had to do another round of figuring out what components I was going to put yeah. in my board. So now I really felt like I've dedicated so much time trying to make it super easy. I mean, we've, we've got to the point where on our website, we've got a, you know, it's called kit builder and you can literally go through and you can click, um, you know, start by selecting what type of motors you want. And it just keeps asking you questions and based on the answers you select, it'll ask you different questions. And at the end, you just, here's a kit and it's all compatible the very first time. Cause that's something that I wish was there back when I started four years ago. And that's what I've pretty much been trying to do is, is find areas of, or, or items or products or ideas for websites that didn't exist four years ago and make them reality now. So for that 20 year old kid or 16 year old kid or 14 year old kid who's doing it now for the first time, they'll have a much easier time at it. And hopefully waste less money buying incorrect parts. <laughs> so that's yeah. kind of the idea. And now we're, you know, we're four, three and a half, four years in and it's wild. Yeah. It's so, n so now you have like a warehouse where you, where you keep inventory? Yes. So we have wow. a full warehouse in, in, in Henderson. It's about 1600 square feet, not too big, but mm. enough to put racks in and it's yeah. pretty full right now. Um, yeah, we have a lot of stuff. I can I gotta tell you that. We got a rack full of batteries. We got motors and, and wheels and pretty much every part of an electric skateboard you could think of, we've got it there. Um, wow. to sell and it's pretty wild. Yeah. It started out as a hobby and now it's it's me, my fiance works there full time, and my brother works there full time. Wow, so you have three. Wow, that's pretty yeah, crazy. Team of three right now, yeah. That so I as I remember I you came into my radar when I started using a, a website called Kit. Kit.com. Yeah. Yes. yes. Right? So kit.com yes. was this. I, so you're pretty similar to me. That's exactly what I did, right? I did that yeah. with cameras, you know, and like some little accessories for putting lenses on a thing. You know, it's the same story. You know, mm -hmm. I built one because I wanted to make it. And then, boom, next thing I know, I had like, you know, 20 people working for me. And we were cranking these things out. But then, of course, that was a bubble. I didn't realize that was a bubble. And then uh, we had to shift into DSLRs. And then the DSLR was also kind of a bubble, and then Chinese, China came in with all the products and then kind of undercut us all and put us out of business. And then other that I didn't know what the hell I was doing because that was my first time around. But then now I'm starting with batteries, right? And with the mm -hmm. battery thing, I, I thought about doing it different. I'm like, I'm not going to hire a bunch of people. I don't want to manufacture products. What if I just make videos? What if I just drive traffic and I can do this affiliate thing? And that's what I started doing. And mm -hmm. kit.com was this website that would allow you to put together all these, uh, well, kits, right? Kits. Uh, uh, groups yeah. of affiliate uh, or products that you would sign up to affiliates and stuff. And they even had an affiliate with the, the company or whatever. Uh, and so I started making kits there. And then I remember your thing came up. Uh, I, I saw it or something. You you came across. I ran out of everything. And I'm like, oh my god! You were actually building batteries. Where where you were only, among the only ones that were building batteries. Everyone else was like using like lipo packs, or they were yeah. using some like Chinese build whatever, right? Yeah. But you were actually building like what were they? 10s like 20 10s two Ps with yeah. Samsung 25 R cells, so they could output about 50 amps. Yes. Um, which was. Uh, which is honestly, which is still nowadays pretty decent. I mean, for yeah. electric skateboards, 50 amp, even still most electric skateboard batteries still don't output 50 amps. So at the time, yeah, like that's plenty. Good. I mean, it, still it's plenty. Even it's plenty me, to get going plenty. quick. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah, yes. yeah. yeah, Plenty. <laughs> even, you know, so yeah. So like I was like one of the ones that are old. I, no one else was doing it. And I was like, well, like I, it was to the point where I couldn't find one. Like my very first build, I used three, three S lipos in series. Um, which again was fine, but I was like, this sucks having to unplug all three of them and charge them all with a balance charger separately. I'm like, ah, this is, yeah. I don't know, this is lame. Like, I'm going to learn how to do it right, like, or <laughs> yes. try to do it better. <laughs> you know, maybe not yeah, right. Yeah, because the better. thing about those liposes is that they're, they're not BMS. Like, they're, right. they're usually right. made to put out like a ton of power. So the BMSs can't handle or they're too inefficient. They would get too hot. They're, so they're, they're okay, but when you charge them, you have to charge them with a balancing charger, right? But usually you can't run at those voltages. You need at least 10S to run a decent, right? A decent yeah, I mean, uh, you could get board. A, we've, got a lot of, we've got a lot of customers who opt for like 6S batteries, which would get oh, them, wow. you know, mm -hmm. around 18 miles per hour, 16 to 18, which for most people is plenty. It's fine. Yeah. yeah. Um, 
you know, you get 10S, you start going up into the 20, 25 mile per hour range, and then you get 12S guys who are going 30 to 40 miles an hour, which is wild. But no, 6S, I feel like, I mean, it's it's pretty low, but it works. And a lot of people don't ever have any desire to go faster than that. Um, so yeah, the 6S has been fine. But yeah, the battery that I was building was a 10S 2P 25R pack, could output about 25, or I'm sorry, 50 amps. Um, Burst of 25? What? Yeah. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, and, and then, like fifteen uh, continuous or something. But you don't need fifteen continuous yeah. unless you're going uphill or. Like. It doesn't right, take right. that much to once you get up to speed. Once you get going, get. right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's where people get like super hung up on these high, crazy amperages, and they, it's not necessarily necessary. Um, but yeah, it would go. I think it was. I think what twenty five hours are twenty five hundred milliamp hours. So we had about yeah. five thousand milliamp hour capacity, which was getting people about eight to 10 miles of range, which is pretty much like the industry standard at that point. So I was like, all right, yeah. this is good. And I was, you know, buying them and selling. And I sold so many of them. I was like, <laughs> I had to bring in a buddy to sit there with me spot welding all day long. I was like, this is insane. Like, yeah, I, I mean, because no one was doing it. And I was just no like, one was doing it. I mean, I yeah. think China was doing it, but you were looking at it yeah. like you got to send hundreds of dollars to some obscure ah. Chinese guy and then wait months for maybe it shows up, maybe it doesn't show up, and maybe it shows up, right. it's trash. Like, cause you know, it's mystery right. sales for China, right? It's just, right. So yeah, that was yeah. the thing that you were there at the right time and mm -hmm. you were early enough where no one was doing it. No one's catering that company. No. I mean, not that market, right? And that market was also, you were, you, you were kind of making that market because before maybe yeah. people didn't know that they needed or wanted a skateboard. And it wasn't until maybe right. they came across one of your videos and you're like, oh, I want one of those things. So not only are you making it, but you're also kind of creating the market. I know there's other factors yeah. that were creating those markets, like yeah. like the fact that Casey Neistat was running around with a boosted board. <laughs> I mean, that's one of the reasons, he's one of the reasons why I wanted one too. I had no idea they even existed until he had a boosted board. I'm like, I want, I, I'm like, I want that. I'm going to get one yeah. of those. I'm like, oh, no, I'm not going to get one of those. They are $1,500. That's <laughs> $1, not going to happen. $1,500. Right. I mean, yeah. It just ain't going to happen. I mean, there's something to be said about the boosted board. It's a very high quality, you know, board. But yeah. for a college student, it didn't matter how high quality it was. But I you know what? They they actually, board. they didn't fare well. Like their batteries yeah. don't last well. Like uh, three, right. four years and you're done. And these are supposed to be batteries that last like 6,000 cycles. They're A123s, right? Yeah. But I think mm -hmm. the way they designed it with such small batteries, they're they're really being torture every time you yeah. get on that board and so yeah. you can they, they'll deliver the power but they just won't last very long you know you give them a right. few hundred cycles and then they're done and that's why people yeah. are like they're probably asking you hey how to make me a battery for my for my boosted uh, right it's crazy because we still get so many questions about the boost because now that boost it's gone i mean there's not really a lot of replacement parts um yeah. available so we, we still get questions over and over again about their batteries and and because everything's so proprietary and all the connectors are relatively proprietary, like their ESCs like lock out a lot of, I mean, you have to really know what you're doing enough to bypass like the ESC restrictions as far as just, you can't just plug a battery in and it will yeah. work. It, it's, you have to- It like, talks with the battery BMS, right? Yeah. 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 The BMS talks to the ESC and they like confirm together to make sure it's genuine and all this stuff where like, yeah. I can't easily walk someone through that process. Like I yeah. can supply the cells, I can supply you a battery, but you're going to have to like do a lot of work. And like a lot of these people who bought a pre-built board don't know how I to do that. They're not it. interested in doing it. Like they're not, yeah. they don't have a soldering iron at home. They don't have a multimeter at home. They yeah. don't have any of that. So like a lot of these people with boosted, like they're just paperweights kind of right now. <laughs> you're like, like they're not really anything. Just rip everything out. <laughs> <laughs> or throw said, it in the hey, trash. <laughs> we can we can save your deck if you want to replace the your deck. motor and your ESC. <laughs> we can do it. <laughs> the motors? But like, no, are uh, the motors the, the any motors, good? Uh, the motors, ha yeah, they're good. They're just they have another weird proprietary connector too. Oh so well, like, yeah, just won't even strip yeah, that, just that off and add new connectors on. Yeah. But again, it's the same reason why they didn't <laughs> bypass the. They don't know how to. You know, no, nothing to be said, not, not to make fun of anyone who can't solder. That's nothing. I No, it's just so there's retail customers. Yeah. Yeah. It's just not the, something that they want to do. Like, they just yeah. don't, don't feel comfortable with it. And it's fine. But, you know, it's crazy. Like, it's a so. different breed of people. There's like DIY yeah. crowd. And then there's the people who just retail. They just want to buy a thing and yeah. then 
turn it on and, and go right so and and we're hoping to bridge that gap like we're really trying to get like so like we're coming out with a board in march um we haven't really announced it at all but we're, we're dropping a, like a pre-built board or kit depending on what they want to do um it's called the interstellar and we're trying to make it where if the people who want to buy a board they can buy one and then if for whatever reason m boards disappear off the face of the earth we go out of business so they decide they hate us all the parts in this board then nothing's proprietary about it. Like there's literally nothing proprietary. And I think anything proprietary hurts the end user. So we're making it literally all readily available parts pre-built okay. for them so that whatever they want to do, they can make their own upgrades, they can make their own repairs, they can do whatever they want. Or of course we'd help them do it. But if yeah. they want to, they have the freedom to. And that's like the biggest thing for us. Is like, that's why we were pushing all of our videos and stuff because we're tired of seeing people get burned by these ultra huge companies that just yeah. like, poof, gone and I'm they're like, all going ah. down right how so how yeah. is it possible that you're surviving this storm when uh, everyone else went under uh you know that's a great question <laughs> so no it's not a, no it, it is uh honestly i think what's going on is is people are are they they got really really big hmm. earlier on than i did and then when china came up with all their knockoff boards um, yeah. it kind of swept their legs right out from under them where I have been growing alongside of the China brands. Mm -hmm. So like any, I, maybe I, maybe I could have grown exponentially better without them. But what I'm getting now is people have all these Chinese boards that don't work anymore. So they need someone to help them fix them. And that's where we're coming in as well. And, and figure, you know, oh, telling people how to upgrade their stuff, selling them aftermarket parts, um, for their Chinese boards or their, for their, I mean, we get questions on evolve every day. Because there's just so many boards out there that are just yeah. old. Like, they've had them since, I think, 2015 or earlier, some of them. Like, they're crazy old, some of them. So, like, I think we're at the point where we've kind of – we didn't get too big too quickly. Where a lot of the other brands got so boosted was huge. I mean, massive. And China just put a gigantic dent in the side of them. And, like, yeah. where we're a three-person team, one of them is my fiancé. So, worst case scenario, like, I'm not paying – I mean, she's getting paid, but – it's the same difference, right? Yeah. And brother. So we're, we're staying small, but you we're stayed you know, pulling. And I yeah. feel like we're pulling pretty impressive numbers at this point, but like we're not this huge corporation with a corporate office and like all these extra people who absorb so much of that income. Like that doesn't have to be that way. So I think we're, by staying small and staying efficient, you know, we're able to put our money in the best places possible and keep growing. Like we've doubled from last, like 2020 should have been a horrible year. We doubled from 2019. What? Really? Yeah. So Absolutely you're doing insane. good. <laughs> I mean, part of the reason, you know, China was shut down. So we were at, at a certain point, we're the only ones who could get replacement parts to anybody for a while because oh, I see. luckily, thankfully our bat, like our, our inventory numbers were able to have mostly not fully, but mostly outlast the delays in China. So oh, luckily by the time we were really getting super, super low on stuff, they were opening back up and we were able to get more shipments in. Wow. So we were like that buffer for the public where they couldn't get anything out of China for months. We were that buffer. So like that helped a ton, but still, I like we're still up 40%, um, you know, year to date in 2021 than we were 2020. So we're doing good so far and we're looking forward to like the summer. <laughs> wow. <laughs> that summer. Yeah, it's exciting. That's crazy. Yeah. So yeah, you stay light. See, you, I, you didn't make that mistake that I made the first time around where grow it. You know, it's like we would get slow because too many orders would come in. I'm like, hire another person, you know, and hire another person. And then six months on the line, I got like so many people standing around going like, hey, what do we do? You know, and it's, it's all yeah. friends and family and I could just get rid of, a, you know, so a ton of problems. Yeah. Right. But you, yeah. it seems like you, you did it right. Uh, you didn't invest a lot in proprietary hardware also, right? Right. We, I mean, we've invested a little bit in some custom truck designs, which in the grand scheme of things are not that expensive. Like our mold was like 1500 bucks, not a huge deal. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if, if for whatever reason I got stuck with a mold that's useless, it's again, it's $1,500. It's not a, you know, not the end of my world or anything. Yeah. Um, you know, so we, we've made a few proprietary things, but not really. I mean, like our enclosures are all to our design, but like, again, they're such a low cost item um, that it's not a huge deal. We don't have any custom motors or custom anything like that. ESCs. No custom ESCs. Yeah. We didn't get do all, I mean, I mean, we, we were, we're to the point where we could have done that, but now there's a, such great stuff on the market. I'm just like, ah, no. Even the Chinese stuff, right? 
like a lot I, of the Chinese stuff's getting pretty good. Now there's still some nonsense out there, but it's getting yeah. pretty good. Like yeah. I remember I got uh these these little dual boards that everyone's got uh I you probably know what they are and like they they don't have a brand and they all slightly yeah. different from all kinds of different like factories, but they're basically the same design, right? Yeah. And I remember I threw two of those systems on a board, so it's an all-wheel drive with the hub motors. And I, I'm riding around, and I'm like, my God, this thing's amazing. Like, the acceleration is fast. I, I was getting, like, 40 miles because I put, like, 50 cells on the bottom. Oh, so yeah, this yeah, yeah, super, yeah, super heavy board, right? Uh, but I'm like, how does this compare? I'm like, I don't know because I've never written anything that's other than right. my made-up, you know, whatever, DIY creation. So I remember I, we, I put it up against an Eve, Evolve, mm -hmm. uh, the top of the line, whatever. Yep. It just took it. I mean, it was like, whoosh, mine just went. And then mm -hmm. it uphill. And the only thing is the, that one was lighter and smoother, and it has those extra fancy trucks yeah. that turn, like, really fast, right, and real tight corners. It had, like, little stuff like that, right? But I'm like, and my board's, like, Six hundred dollars worth in parts, I think. I was like, yeah, yeah. So I was like, these these controllers with the little radios and they and they like they don't fail, they don't like disconnect. They're like pretty solid. I'm like, these are not like complete crap. They're like they're cheap. Mm -hmm. They don't break down. I I now I have one that doesn't work. Like one of one out of the four wheels doesn't turn. But okay, since yeah. it's three, I'm like, I don't care. I'm still okay. driving around like yeah. nothing, right? <laughs> but. I think that was the thing that happened, right? Those started coming in like a while ago, and then it was hard to compete with those because you're like, why should I buy even the these these Fox boxes or the mm -hmm. those are the Vesk? Uh, is it Vesk? It's like a Vesk based ESC. base yeah. ESCs, right? Mm -hmm. Those are expensive. They're you're talking about a hundred dollars. At least, right? Um, per per motor, like the Fox boxes right now retail for two hundred dollars. Um, yeah, which I I do have to say they are really good. <laughs> They're but, good because he did um, a lot and, of design anybody, on it. Yeah, he spent yeah, a ton so for, of time designing yeah. it, oh, redesigning tons it, and like of money. Yeah. yes, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> which is the reason why he's out of business. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Probably. Right, right. <laughs> uh, yeah, I know it's it's tough, like and. Um, you know, no shade to, to Jason, but yeah, like the fact that like when he when he went under, um, no one could get replacement Fox boxes for a while. No one could get replacement like sleeves for his hub motors. The hub anymore. motors, yes. And like that was like you know them like inertia going out of business, and then um, inboard going out of business, and then Boost going out of business, and all these proprietary parts like were just screwing so many customers because they just couldn't find replacements, and no one was producing them anymore, and they never will produce them anymore. I mean, yeah. luckily the Fox box is out again um, for anyone who needs one of those. But other than that, though, like that's it. It's so, like we were like, yeah, like, we're not doing. We're, we want to make it where if you like that whole thing is if you build it, you can repair it, you can upgrade it. Yeah. Or there was know, also without, a lot without... of problems with those motors that he was doing, right? I think the Fox box he got it where it's pretty good, right? Like I don't know, yeah. you probably have experience. They don't yeah. they don't break as much. They're kind of we're, solid. We carry them now, and they're solid. And I wouldn't care if they weren't that solid. Like the we do have some of the Chinese ESCs as well. They're a lot cheaper, and mm -hmm. they're pretty good. Um, the failure rate is definitely much higher than to me the best based ESCs. Um, you know, you get these little you get these Chinese ESCs, and you're throwing these big ass like sixty three seventy four motors on them, and then <laughs> wonder why they don't work after a little while. So. <laughs> Yes. You know, we've refined the way that we've, like, our recommendations to make sure that people are pairing them with proper motors and stuff like that. But, yeah, yeah. no, it's it's pretty crazy. I, the customization on the VESC side of things is really, really where a lot of the higher-end builds, yeah, people really flock to those types of ESCs for sure. Yeah, and for uh, for those of you who are listening who don't know, like, the, the VESC is an open source Yes. A uh, motor controller that Vetter, right, did. It's mm -hmm. a person Benjamin that designed Vader it or whatever. Is, that would, yep. he, and it was open source, so a lot of people and, yep. took it and, you know, they they modified it and made it better. And and yep. Jason, in particular, did probably the most modifications on it. They, he built, like, he used to start using, like, higher-end MOSFETs. He designed a, a custom, like, casing for it that would, like, dissipate heat a lot better. Uh, then he put two of them together in a single board, right? So, so he did a few things, yeah. 
uh, probably a lot of debugging because I know the earlier ones did have like some things that would break often, right? Like some of the electronics or something. Yeah, just like anything, the the original rounds were rough, uh, but they've refined. I mean, it's it's at the point now where there will not be. I'm sure it will not ever be any more iterations of it, and it probably doesn't need any. But uh, you know, it just depends now. It's like making sure that there's being manufactured to the proper. Spec yeah, it used to be, and using high quality now. components because yeah, it's right. the same thing. That's the end of it. If you, as long as you put the high quality components in it, it's gonna be that whole unit's gonna be solid for a while. Yeah, so, you know. and this is a big unit. Like it can do sixty amps, right? No, it could do uh, higher. Sixty volts. Yeah, sixty volts. Uh, sixty volts. And it's like three hundred amps. Was that what they're at now? Jesus Christ. Okay. It's so like by the way, fifty. I don't know if I'm off the top of my head. I, there's just so many different. Specs to keep straight what in my head, would but that it's, be? It's Let's quite see. high. Um, it's quite high. I don't know how reliably you could continue to pull 150 through that thing or 300 at 60 volts. It de depends. Yeah, depends. It depends. You gotta put it like stuff. a yeah. You put a heat sink in it or something. <laughs> yeah. Or, I'm like liquid cooling or something. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. People have done it. It's wild. Yeah. But, but to give you guys an idea, let's say that you do 100 amps. That's like six kilowatts like that's yeah what that right that's like eight horsepower on this tiny little <laughs> controller that's of course if your battery can deliver that kind of power and if right. your motors don't melt yeah <laughs> and i don't like i i don't know if anyone's really pulling that much power through it i just think that the there's so much headroom there where yeah any well you can skateboard battery you can because think about it it's it. like you could, yeah. even if you're like 250 pounds 300 pounds for a split second, it, it you oh, use sure. that power, and then after like three, four seconds, you're up to speed, and then you're like going, you're going twenty miles an hour. So right, you're you can use you're that back power. Down it's to just, very minimal amperage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, yeah. It's, it's just way too much. Like that, you could almost put that yeah. little thing on a motorcycle and still, you know, probably get some. I mean, speed. probably. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't know if I would, but <laughs> if you cool them enough, I think it would be. Uh, yeah. You could you could you could probably make it last so it won't you know blow up yeah, every, oh yeah, totally. every week. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that's cool, man. Yeah, you did it right and you that's why you're surviving. What are you using right now as motors? You're still doing the whole like belt driven thing? Or are you moving into the or are you also carrying some of the hub motors? What's what's that so happening? We carry yeah, so we carry the, the the regular brushless motors, belt driven type systems. We also carry hub motors, and we are also carrying like the direct drives, which are pretty much like the hub motors, but the motors are removed out from the inside of the wheel and, uh, and push yeah, down yeah, the yeah, shaft yeah. a little bit. Okay. Um, so that you can pop on your own wheels. So we're carrying all those wheels. as well. I mean, all I really like the belt driven system. I, I ah, think it's okay. more modular. So my whole thing is like with the hub motors, for instance, if for whatever reason, like you can't find those sleeves anymore, your your motors are kind of useless. Like whether it's, you know, the Raptor with inertia and like you just can't use them anymore if there's no sleeve. So uh, our whole thing, especially with our boards we're coming out with, we, we did belts. We did dual belt systems. That, um, that way, for whatever reason, you could pop your own wheels on. You can do switch your gearing ratios out, make it faster or slower or higher to torque, less torque, more range, less range, whatever that is. Um, and then if whatever reason anything fails in there, you can replace it with anything almost off the shelf, which is our whole thing. Um, yeah. we're trying to remove ourselves from proprietariness as much as possible because that's where you get in trouble. Yeah. Yeah. That's where yeah. people get hurt. Right. So that means you're, yeah. you're basically like taking all these, you're testing all these parts that are coming into the market and then you're, you're probably t having to test them and then put them together, see how they work together as a. Let's mm -hmm. build and, and then... find really nice, reliable combinations. Yeah. And then suppliers also, right? Because again, it could yeah, be the perfect yeah. design, but if you're using crappy materials yeah. and components. And that's another reason why we're doing so well is people are don't want to deal with China. They don't want to deal <laughs> yes. with their customer service. They don't want to try to talk to them. They don't want to wait for a response. Many of them don't give you a response. The, the crazy thing yeah. is a lot of these, like the, the same suppliers will answer me because I'm a wholesale account. But yeah. won't answer direct to consumer yeah. customers. Well, who's got time to time answer a hundred emails? Or, <laughs> right, they don't have the time, or whatever. Whatever their excuse is, whether that's an excuse or not, they'll answer me. So I'm like, well, I will take the burden of the emails, and I will sell the components, 
no different really than going directly to the supplier and buying it, except for the fact that you get to talk to me, a real person in America, versus some mystery person overseas. People yeah. will like and value that, and they'll pay more for it if they yeah. have to to have a real person, which is our whole thing as well. So, I think you know when we first started, our customer service was very lacking. I could never answer enough emails, but now that we've expanded and we're we have got some years under our belt, we've got my brother who's full time doing customer service and packing and everything like that. So we're at the point where we're we're kicking ass as far as customer service goes. So I think it's nice. starting to really show. I mean, you know, we'll see. <laughs> yeah, I, that but, uh, customer service is so tough, man. It's like, yeah. and it's like, it's and that's where we bring our additional value. Yeah, I almost try to get ahead of it, right? Where like I try to answer mm -hmm. as much because like my thing is now like I make videos, yeah. right? And then then I push product. Right. right. Doing those videos. So most of the I try to answer most of the questions there so that then there's less questions on the back end. Right. But there's always questions. Oh. And I think how we're doing OK, because we were doing like one hundred thousand dollars, one hundred fifty thousand dollars in sales a month. And we were still able I was still able to capture all the emails. Right. Like. Yeah. But then obviously there's a lot of them that were like being sent to the wrong place and stuff. But I think now we got like three people and. You know, they're still sending me the ones that they can't answer. And I, I think we're doing yeah. okay. Um, then, uh, of course, there's always people asking s s dumb questions, like stuff that doesn't relate oh, to yeah. any of your products. Uh, the stuff that, like, I, I, it's so infuriating. People are, like, say, like, hey, how much battery do I need to for my RV? You know, they'll be something like that, you know. And I'm like, I don't know. It's like, running. yeah. <laughs> What are, what are you doing? <laughs> what do you have on it? Like, I'm like, that's like asking how much is the car? How fast does the car go? It's like, well, which car? You know what I mean? Like, I, where I, are I, you? Like, yeah, I've you just can't that ask nobody, that. <laughs> right. I've determined that like nobody reads anything either. Yeah. Like it's seemingly, I mean, of course there's customers who do their due diligence, but like there's people who just, I don't know. They just don't read anything. They ask yeah. me a question. I'm like, Bro, it is the first line, the first <laughs> yes. line of the product description. Yes. Like, and I don't want to be, and I'm never like rude about it, but I'm like, come on, read a little <laughs> yes. bit, read a little bit. Come on, you can do it. <laughs> yeah. Or also, I that's the other thing that I have like 600 videos in my channel, and it's like, yeah. I can't even find the answers, right? I'm yeah. like, so people don't want to sit through a bunch of videos, and I'm right. like, well, listen, you you got it. I not just, I can't answer all these questions, like you know, it's right. like. They're they're right there. You can read over here. I don't know. Good luck. <laughs> like, <I'm> sorry. <laughs> I have totally. to do that because it's either like I literally spend all day sitting in front of the computer answering questions, right. or I can go and build stuff and make videos. You know what I mean? Like, yep. You gotta exactly. Sometimes you gotta look at where the payoffs are. Like, do I help? Like a video explaining a thing will help you know hundreds of people, maybe thousands of people. Where if you sit there talking to someone back and forth, there's also like high maintenance customers. There's customers that will require 200 emails just to get through like the project. Oh man! Right, and my, then my brother who works for me is gonna be so happy you just said that because he's <laughs> he's got a few every day. Every yes, day. we talk to the same people every. And day. here's the crazy thing: sometimes you don't catch capture them. Like sometimes yeah. you're like talking to this guy and you're like answering and you're like, oh. and then somehow you're like, wait a minute, this. This is how I talked to this guy before, and you like type in his name or something, and you're like hundreds of emails, interactions oh, that you had with him. You're like, oh my god, I've spent literally hundreds of hours of answering <laughs> your questions. Yeah. Oh my gosh, yes. <laughs> you're like, no, no, <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah, I've I've gone through that whole thing, uh, but it it's challenging, but it definitely, you know, people appreciate it. Uh, uh, that yes, you definitely that you have the warehouse. Yeah, I think that's the that's the other way that you you went right about it. See, because here's the thing. Originally, what I wanted to do is not do products anymore. Right. I was done mm -hmm. with doing the products. It's hard. The the expenses are high because you got to have a warehouse and insurance. And, you know, if you start getting employees and then you realize that employees don't cost you like the, the hourly wage that you pay them. It's like that. It's almost twice or three times that. Once you start like the taxes and the thing yep. and the insurance and the, all the other nonsense, right? Yeah. So absolutely. you're like, geez, it costs a lot of money to just run a place and have a couple employees. So I didn't want to do that. What I want to do is just make videos and get good at getting views, yeah. 
and then driving traffic to someone else. And I was doing pretty right. good, except for the fact that they were making a ton of money. I wasn't. <laughs> you know, it's right. just it was just wasn't always working. I'm like, ah. Oh. So that's why I was kind of forced to go and get a warehouse again and then yep. start buying the like, you know, product and then and then so now I'm basically promoting myself mostly. I still have partners and I promote a bunch of other things. But so you sort of figure that out early. Like you didn't go the route where you were just pushing affiliates somewhere else, right? Yeah. Well, I, and honestly, I probably would have done a lot more. I mean, we did affiliates. Like I definitely did made an okay amount of money on Amazon affiliate links. But mm -hmm. still, like at the time, there was no products to link to. Ah. They didn't exist on Amazon. So I'm like, they well, were I, gotta, listed. I have to make them. I'm like, I have to build these batteries because there is not any batteries. Yeah, batteries right there were. Now. Yeah. They were not, and they're still not really. I, I think it's just, I don't think people want to sell them on Amazon. And I just think they're kind of like, uh, people like abuse their stuff and then just send it back on Amazon. No questions asked. Like we've tried Amazon multiple times and it's just like, we always get screwed in the end. Always. Every yeah. time. Because people abuse their stuff and they just send it back. Send yeah. it back, send it back, no matter what. And you got to like, get, oh. there's different tiers of, because uh, I used to have this, and there's that tier where you they buy it from you, they stock it, mm -hmm. and then mm -hmm. they ship it, and then they take the returns. You never hear from the returns. They, like, manage right. the returns. But it's a lot. It's like 40% or something. That's yeah. how much margins like, we, they want. Our margins are not that high. Like, they <laughs> would never. Like, so you're never like, I got to give you 40% of the yeah. retail value of this thing? It's like, Whoa. Right. That's crazy. That doesn't leave anything for me, right? Like, right. I'd be yeah. losing money every time. <laughs> like, <laughs> yes. <no way. laughs> so, yeah, so that's the crazy thing. Um, how are you sourcing the battery cells? So we've gone through uh, multiple rounds of different testing. So we've, you know, we went out and got multiple samples from all the, you know, different various uh, manufacturers. And we brought them in, stress test them, opened them up, inspected them, made sure that we could um pull the amperage that they say they're supposed to pull out of them yeah um because there's so a, it's a big problem with... fake battery cells yes definitely. you you oh, know you think you're time. buying panasonics you think you're buying samsung's or 25 hours or 30 q's or whatever all, especially those are highly highly uh whatever faked counterfeit in China. Yeah. counterfeit yeah. yeah so we you know we went through multiple different suppliers requested samples from multiple um then built a real one that we knew that was real with genuine cells and we would compare and, and, you know, half the suppliers lived up to what <laughs> yeah. they supposedly were suppliers. and the other yes. half were. And, you know, we kept narrowing it down to, and, and found a supplier who was, you know, we told them the, the amount of volume we'd be doing and that literally everyone would be tested and thoroughly because we know our customers are going to use them to their fullest extent yeah. like they're gonna put them through their bases so we're gonna know if they're not gonna if start they're working. fake so, yeah yeah because like the problem is you'll get like the problem is that you can get samples made that yeah they send you good you ones order your full batch they're not yeah. genuine anymore yes they, you know they'll take the l on the the original one and then they'll they'll do is you know all switcheroo on you know, yeah when you order 100 units and the problem is that every batch you have to retest and you have to recheck yeah. because You'll get a batch that is good, you know. It's like, oh, 20,000 cells. I, that's what we did. Like, we got some yeah. cells and 20,000, and they're like, great. And then the second batch, they were like crappy. Yeah, and you're like, yeah, oh, so come on. Yeah, it's not, I mean, it, it's it's a reality of, of the beast as far as like doing it, but I mean, you just got to keep on your suppliers. And like, our, our batches aren't, I mean, they're pretty decently sized. What are like, you know, three to four hundred completed packs at a time? Um, so oh, we're I not see. doing. Tens of oh, so you're having them doing now? You're not, you're not yeah. spot welding anymore. I just can't. Like yes. I wanted to. I'm like, I'll, I'm like, no, I can do it. I'll just do it. It's fine. No, right? no. Oh, no way. If no, anyone it's... ever, I just can't do it. Like, and honestly, there's, there, like, I am not a battery manufacturer. Like, I'm not. Yeah. Like, I'm a person who could do it, but like, they make them better than I can. They yeah. Do I mean, like, as far as like our supplier now, now, I'm not saying all of them are, but our supplier makes them to a, a spec where I feel comfortable putting it in my own board. Like, and yeah. that's the thing is I would never carry a battery that I wouldn't feel comfortable underneath my feet. So like I use all of our own stuff. So, and I've been happy with everything and all it's passed over testing and everything looks good. And I've had literally no one complain about any kind of issue as far as what they expected to be able to pull from their battery or their expected capacity or anything like that. So 
so far so good. I mean, knock on wood that everything continues to stay yeah. safe. But, you know, we do our due diligence the best we can to make sure everything works out. Yeah. Where do you think this market's going to go? Because now, now you're competing with all the Chinese, right? Because now, so what happened is like four years ago, there wasn't cheap boards. It was a, it was a right. novel idea. It was like, oh, this is a new thing. You put batteries, it just goes. You know, people were like, this is witchcraft. What do you, what do you mean? You're, how come you're not kick pushing, you know? Um, but then China woke up to the fact that there's a market because these, these yeah. American companies were selling boards at $1,500 each, right? Which is uh, high priced, I think, to pay for a electric skateboard. But when there's nothing else, that's that's how much you pay, right? It's a premium right. brand with this, you know. And then what happened is that all these Chinese brands started coming out, and they were selling what boards for four, six hundred bucks, five hundred bucks. Yeah, I, they were. Bucks. I mean, they were probably from day one. They were at least half. At the very highest, it was half of what like these main boards were going for for sure. And then yeah. they've just gone down and down and down and down. They've gotten yeah. significantly cheaper. And the the and they were crappy at the beginning, but then yeah. they got oh, no, to the point. Good. They're where good. they were good like you can drive around and yeah like the average person doesn't need a monster the average person just needs to get on and drive and you know have some reliable that connects the little because they have this little radio you know controllers that are wireless you just need to like not have the thing freak out and kick you out of it right yeah and that, yeah, the, and the good thing is that like ever since day one, pretty much there's always been a China board, like almost right away. Not right, not from day one, but right within the first about year we, you know, we started the China boards started coming out, and it's always been a, you know, a point with us. Like it's we're not really necessarily competing with them. Where, like they will always anyone who wants to buy a board from China is probably gonna just do it. Like there's no one like. There's very few people who are unsure whether or not they want to build a board or not. There's people who want to build one or they, or someone who does, or yeah, there's someone who wants to build a board or there's someone who doesn't. And those yeah. people that don't want to build, we're not going to get their business anyways. It doesn't matter. Oh, I see. So, well, they might when you, when you release they the might one that's when ready. It breaks. Yes. But <laughs> or, or, well, also when you release the one that's working. <laughs> yeah. Because right, right so, now you don't sell any boards, like ready to go. We we do not sell any oh, pre-built boards. Yeah. Wow. So we will okay. it come March twenty second. We will have our board out out into the. This is the deck right back there. It's oh. one of the first sample decks. It's That's so weird, out. dude. You're coming up with a product when everybody else has failed. <laughs> you don't want to know why? This is why I'm not afraid of it. Like, so there's some real risk here, but at the same time, we sell DIY products very, very well. Like we have no problem moving DIY products and every single component in our boards, pretty much probably 95% of the components in our boards could all be sold individually as DIY products as well. So worst case scenario, we launch our board and it completely flops. No worries. We just won't put them together. <laughs> we'll just sell the parts and kits and yeah. other various methods and we'll be fine. Yeah. But I would love to have a nice, like I, I wanted, I've always wanted like a, a board that I liked. Design a board that I really like and just put it out there for other people to ride. And that's what we're going to do. But we also have a backup plan where we're going to sell the complete kit or the complete done product. And then we'll sell all the parts in a box that you can put together yourself. And then that'll be the two methods. And then also all those products will just be available for people individually. to buy individually and piece together. The yeah. Product. So that way you're not pigeonholing yourself. And then I've right. obviously once... You're doing this. You're like, well, this is you know only ten percent of the market here, so of my business. So you're like, maybe right. we we'll, won't we'll do that anymore. But that's how you do it, right? Like, because you don't have money to, to, to. What do people do like when they go exploring the markets, right? They, they. Uh, there's a lot of people that spend money analyzing markets and stuff before they even go oh, into yeah. business and stuff. And yeah, you're like, it, nah, it didn't work out that way. <laughs> yeah. Yes, it, it kind of just. The ball started rolling downhill and it just kept getting bigger and now we're here. Like And now you're there yeah. Was no like pre we didn't like There's no business it. plan. There was no business plan. It's just me, <laughs> especially. It's just me. I was just like, yes. Yeah, well we'll see what happens. Like it was literally just to pay for school. And now it's the point where like I, you know It's my business. My job now every day. Yeah, it's my business. Yeah. What were you going to school for? Did did that uh So film, uh actually. So oh, that's really? why, like yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay, so okay. I went to school for film. I did, you know, broadcast all throughout high school. 
So like I know how to put together a video, and that's I think another reason why Mboards is so successful is because because like, you do in-house marketing. Do media. Yes, yeah, they can't do marketing. marketing. They can't do marketing, and like we yes. do all of it ourselves. I don't pay a single person for any piece of marketing ever. I do that's it all myself right. because if you don't do it yourself, it doesn't get done right. <laughs> first of all, and also yeah. don't pay anybody. So like all the product photos, all the product videos, all the tutorials and videos on our YouTube are all done. I'm in most of them. <laughs> are all right. really. So yeah. like that's all an expense that doesn't exist for us. Yes. Um, so yeah, you're that, still yeah. you're still the same like me. That the other day yeah. I was talking to a friend of mine, and they were like like a childhood friend, right? I, I don't talk to this guy forever, like, but I know him from from way back in the day, right? And then he's like, I go, what are you doing these days, you know? And he goes, oh, I'm doing marketing, man, like this stuff, like Facebook marketing and this stuff. And he goes, I just did. Uh, he threw a figure, fifty thousand dollars in this web store this month or whatever. And I'm like, what, like? I go, maybe I need to talk to you. I go, because I, I don't know how to market stuff on and, and Facebook, I go, and stuff, you know? And then I go, what uh, what kind of, like, marketing budget did you do? And he's like, well, it was like 35%. He goes, so I'm like, so 35% of your sales that went to the to marketing? I'm like, oh, I'm like, I don't spend zero. I'm like, yeah, I right. do all my marketing. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> Yeah, I'm like, oh, maybe not. Maybe I'm doing okay. I go because, because I, I don't see. I have no budget for marketing. Like I never pay Google for ads. No. I never like to put zero. Right, yeah. you're just right. Just make never. videos, just post to your social networks, and then the sales just come because people are following you. Like, yeah. I did the work, you know, beforehand to build an audience, and then now the audience yeah. just you know follows me or whatever whatever I'm yeah. doing. Definitely. And I think that's what people can't do. Like, there's no hack to get in that. I guess there is a no. hack. You pay a bunch of money. You pay 35% of the sales. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> if the market's good enough, that works for you. That but, works, yeah. Right. But, yeah, that's that's just a kind of a different ball game. A different, yeah, you're doing a, yeah. a different business plan, you know. Right. Whatever. Yeah, you and I are, are kind of similar in that <laughs> in that aspect. Where do you think, where do you see yourself going? Like, how do you think, how how much more can you build this, you think? I, I really think um, our, our next thing, so complete boards, that launches the 22nd. That was one of our big things we wanted to get done. Next thing is we, we really need to tackle replacement parts for, we're gonna try to get almost every single board that exists out there, get direct Ooh. replacements for every, because they all ask us, I mean, we get emails every single day i mean there's a few that we won't be able to do there's a few like we will never get uh you know a stock evolve esc it will never happen like no? they're just to they're just to uh evolve does not want them out of their doors or out of their sites and they won't give them to us i can tell you that so you're saying you're gonna try to get replacement parts for all the boards yeah. uh all the boards that are out of out of production it, all the boards in general because a lot of the boards use the same type of especially all the china brands are all using around the same stuff there's a lot of overlap there so yeah. i'm trying to get parts that existing boards um previous boards if we can i mean some of the boards that are just completely discontinued it's not worth it, there's not that many of them around still um, like you know what i'm doing like i just i just learned how to design pcbs right okay, and the, yeah. and the reason why is because like I'm I'm the same thing. Like, look, we have a very similar missions. Like, I'm on the battery side. I'm selling batteries. I'm selling these little things. I we designed these little kids so they can people put together. I'm just trying to help people put batteries together, right? Like easier. Like the more steps, you know, le less figuring out and more like easier, if, if easier to follow steps and stuff, right? And one of those was to make like these PCBs that you can use, like like the BMS. Like, mm -hmm. how do you wire a BMS? You know, it's like, I mean, like, well, I just follow the thing. I'm like, I don't know yeah. which BMS you have, but there's like a million, you know, diagrams online that you can look at. I got tired of telling people that, right? So I'm like, why not just make a board that has the connections? They're all labeled and they work with my other things. And so it, you probably could do something like that for, like, let's, let's say, hypothetically, let's say that you just got tired of hearing all the, boosted people come up and say hey how do i fix my board let's say that you were to design a pcb board that it's exact same shape as the original one but it's got 
a VESC controller, and you could yeah. just rip the old one out. You put this one in there, and now you have another controller, and now you have the connection for your battery. Yep. Bam. It's the new guts with their old yeah. housing, right? And so yeah. for them, they're like, whoa, I, this guy just fixed it. I just have to change the guts. That's yeah, I mean, probably a, a thing of... that you could do. Yeah, so that's what we're thinking about doing for Boosted is if they're willing to part ways with their ESC, we really unlock a lot of options. I mean, a lot yeah. of options. We just got to get a battery pack that'll fit in their battery housing. I mean, like the Fox Box would be a great replacement, but they just got to part ways with their remote. They got to part remote. ways with their ESC, and they have to part ways with their mobile app, which is a lot of the reason oh. they don't want to. Oh, I see. They really like But who has app. who has a good mobile app? Boosted which brands? Oh, Boosted does. Uh, I don't even know if they still have it. Like, I imagine they do. I imagine they didn't delete it, it off the There's app no support. Anything. There's no support, though. So, like, you know, it's weird. How long is it? Yeah, uh, that was, like, you, but you know, know what? Even that, I bet you it's not that even hard to do it. Yeah. Uh, but you would have to pay some. some yeah. And some, then that's where we get into that scary territory where with the proprietariness, like, I don't yeah. want to sink too much money in because it's just. Yeah. It's just. It's just a little no, scary. I say you just do your own system. What you do is yeah. you design your own right app that works with your own whatever modified desk oh, or yeah. whatever controller and then you just whatever board you're like oh this this board here fits uh the old boosted this one the evolves this one the broken this brand or i think there's exactly room for that if that's the oh, reason yeah. where you're going yeah, and by the way like designing a pcb board is not that cra- it's a big problem in your head until you get on there and you do it and you're like oh this is nothing you're just like and like Wrong, for example, yeah. I'm doing, like let's say you can make a board that you can then integrate the Vesk on there, yeah, right? So you don't really cool. you don't have to do all the hard part. You're just literally doing sort of like the mechanical and the electrical part of it. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's that's what I'm doing right now. Like maybe phase two is going to be like actually putting real components in there and having them. Uh, yeah, right. but for right now, I'm like, well, this fixes a lot of my problems, and it fixes. Uh, a lot of issues and makes it so much easier for people to do these things that seem hard now that it seem easy because now you have a board that you can literally label every pin that maybe the original one doesn't have you can color code the thing you can make it fit into another thing you're making like kind of shields like for the arduinos where all the pins are kind of standardized and then you just put them together that's what my battery things are like that and so I, i probably see something very possible yeah. like that for yeah for we definitely want to come out with with kits uh f- for a lot of the proprietary boards who, who with people who are okay with getting rid of their guts we can help those people definitely yeah if you're trying to keep your your spec escs that can get tricky with the connectors and all yeah that. but but if they're willing to get rid of a lot of the electronics for those boards then you're good what well, they would have to right because good. how what is there what kind of other recourse do they have? Like, let's say you have a, a boosted <laughs> right. you know, with a broken battery, for example. Right. I mean, there's not really any other. I mean, there are options. Are people are doing it? Are there people that are servicing them? Yeah, there are services oh, where okay. you can go in and pay for someone to open your battery up, replace the A123s out, and put them okay. back together. And you get pretty much a brand new battery. They just got brand new cells in it. Um, so there are services that way they could do it that way. Um, you know, but... Again, that's just another temporary fix, a Band-Aid after a Band-Aid after a Band-Aid. I looked at one. Uh, you know that guy, Louis, Louis Cole? Fun for Louis? He's a big YouTuber or whatever. Uh, um, he brought me one. He's like, hey, man, can we replace, can we fix this? And I was like, oh, I don't know. Let me see. Then he took it apart. And I'm like, oh, those are a- 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 one, two, threes. I'm like, I-, I can give you some A123s. A- so I gave him some A123s. A- and then... I go, I was looking at it, I'm like, that doesn't seem easy. Like, that's, like, you got to keep yeah. that, and then you got to desolder everything. And I'm like, and these batteries are kind of scary. I don't know if you ever work with A123s, but those I are scary. Because, no. like, if you, like, anything other, uh, every other cell of you, like, short it, it'll mm-hmm. heat up, it'll spark, it'll, you know, whatever, melt stuff. These things, when you short them out, like, they melt stuff instantly, they spark Wow. They they're just like super aggressive at the because uh, they can put out so much power. It's like working with lipos, right? Like lipos right, are right. also kind of scary because <laughs> yeah. if you short them out, <laughs> next thing you know, it's just going up in flames. Uh, so I'm like, I go, I wouldn't even attempt this, but I'm like, go for it, you know. And so he he kind of went at it. He couldn't do it. He he messed up yeah. some. 
yeah. while trying to remove because those tabs also are like the the nickel tabs on the battery pack they're super thick and so you yeah. have to like you know just mangled up all the things and i think he messed up like the bms board or something on yeah. it or something so you really have to know what you're doing or yeah. you have to pay the service how much do you I think know. that service costs? This so is the not service, cheap, right? I, as far as I know, I just looked at a website. I can't remember it off the top of my head. He was offering it, and it was like $200. To oh, that's not batteries. bad, I guess, to Which, save a $1,500. I don't $1, know if that includes the cells or if that uh, just, uh, I don't or if think that just so. requires, like, if they're just rebalancing your pack for you. I don't or, think so because you can't know. get those cells that cheap. I mean, I can right. get them, but they're usually well, yeah. used, and they're like, you know, 80%. Like, those, like what the cells that I'm getting – I one two threes are probably not good for a boosted. They're good for everything else, but right. not for a boosted. You need a cell that's going to do a hundred percent. Because remember, they're, you're abusing that cell, and mm -hmm. it's only good for a few hundred cycles. Yeah. <laughs> Even though any any other, you know, application that cell would last over a thousand cycles, right? But because yeah. you're just because you're pushing it so hard, this just won't last. Right. So you need so, top of the line cells. So for two hundred right. bucks, he's not giving you brand new cells. Probably not. not. I mean, if, if giving you any cells at all. They might just, I, I don't know for sure, but it, I just saw that there was a service and I don't know what that service entails, but it was about 200 bucks, which again, if that's, if it works and your if battery works. works after that, I guess that's a, you know, a good, a good deal. But again, it, it just might be a band aid for a little while. Yeah. Yeah. That's how, the other how quickly is that $200 going to come back around? <laughs> like when yeah. you have to spend another $200 or. You know, yeah, and the, gonna be. the thing is, like, what I ended up telling this guy, I go, look, you're trying to fix this $1,500 piece of junk. Like, it's, the battery is not that great. It's too small. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have, yeah. like, range. It's kind of weird. You can't just buy it anywhere. I'm like, there's too many, like, cons, <laughs> you know, it's like, right. too many, like, you're better off just getting rid of the whole system and putting a new one in there, right? But at this mm -hmm. time, you're trying to save a deck. And some wheels were right. like, <laughs> like yeah. is that even worth it? The deck's all beat up already. I'm like, yeah. it's almost not worth it. <laughs> you're, yeah. You're yeah, boosted. And, and that's what we're trying to do is just, just to help people make that decision first. Like, yeah. Make the decision to be able to fix things easily the first yeah. time around instead of trying to jump through hoop after hoop to fix something that didn't have to be this hard to fix. It's only this hard to fix it because the company made it that way on purpose yeah. like it you know that's just how it is so that's what yeah. we're trying to solve and i feel like we are i feel like you we're think so you think they, they purposely try to make them hard well, why would they use so proprietary dealing with warranties and, oh, you, and you want to control that third party after sales like you don't like they're trying to block uh other companies from selling third party batteries they don't want oh, it. So they use yeah. these weird proprietary connectors so they can sell a the proprietary battery. battery. Or if what if ha what happens if I go and buy some some third party aftermarket battery on Amazon, throw it on my boosted board and it kills my ESC. Then I just conveniently swap my battery out and then go you know, warranty claim that thing. Oh, yeah, that's not very fair either on the like it's protect them as well. Yeah. I kinda understand that. As a company owner, I get it. Like I would if I give you, if I sell you a part that's only meant for this particular thing, and then you use it for something else, and then it yeah. kills it, you're like, "Don't be dumb!" Right? Like you got to treat it with treat all your parts carefully. I'm gonna sell you stuff, you know. but don't be dumb. Don't <laughs> be stupid, okay? <laughs> yeah. How do you, you know. tell that? <laughs> right. It's, it's tough. So I think that's why the proprietariness really exists, and also because it were first, they had to do it from the ground up. From the so ground. So that up. wasn't any fault of their own. It was just there was no there was no way of to do it yet so they had to yeah. come up with it right away originally but but then at that point it's working in their favor they're getting to sell their battery packs replacements how was do you know how their service was like when they were in on when they were in you know, business would I've you heard, i've heard both sides of the coin on that one you know, yeah. some of it was good some of it was bad i never owned a boosted board so i don't know i, I couldn't speak to that for sure yeah. but you know i don't know and it just went down it just yeah Nobody picked it up. Nobody owns the rights, and they're so doing the thing. So, Scooters owns a lot of their IP. Oh, really? Um, if all, I think they actually own all of their IP. But there's no way. I, they're not gonna like. They're not gonna revive Boosted. Boost all Boosted stock was sold off to, like Boosted, 
like another company. So like if you go to boostedboard.com, it exists and you can buy boards, but there's not really any company. Right now? Either. Yep. You can buy yep. it. So there's stock. Can, so there's, there's leftover stock. stock. And, yeah. And I think, and the guy, so the, some guys bought the, somebody, I don't know who has it, bought the remaining stock and also like the rights to some of their factories. So like they're continuing to produce them. Oh, but it's weird. Like it's it's have like it's kind of there, but kind of not. Like uh, it's weird. So again, oh, there's still weird. a lack of replacement parts. Still, and there's the company kind of. And you can't send there, your board to be really. repaired. As far as I know, you, there's no repair options right now, unless there's like a third small business like me. There's some there's guys like just like me who all they do is repair stuff, like yeah. intricate intricate circuit boards, whatever. And that's all they do, and they do yeah. and they're good at it. So there are options. It's just not any mainstream convenient ones. <laughs> so, like, and that's the thing. So, you know. Oh, I see. Well, so that, yeah. So then that means you're going to, as much as you can, you're going to try to figure out how to help people repair their existing boards. Yeah. Yep. Okay. And we're going to try to pull as many people onto the team, you know, team DIY as, as best as we can. <laughs> well, I <laughs> just guess. Just because, you know. Yeah, I start, promote DIY. If we can start them there, you know, if we can start yeah. them there, we can help them so much easier. Yes. So much easier. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. If I got to pick I think everybody should board. should DIY something. I, I don't yeah. think it's healthy to be like, nah, I'm just yeah. going to buy everything. Like, Yeah. And, right? and we've really spent the last few years, like, really trying to iron out all the pain points of building an electric skateboard. Like, there are some part. there were some things where that are just annoying. There's just annoying parts about building boards. So, like, you know, motor mounts are you know, to mount your motor to your trucks. Like there's some great motor mounts out there, but after almost all the time, they always get loose after a while. You mm. got to tighten them. So we came out with our fixed mount trucks. So they're all f like fixed solid, almost just like the boosted board trucks, but at least oh. they accommodate more DIY type motors. And oh, now they don't see they're solid. And so that was one pain point we tried to get rid of. Um, just, just all these different things, like finding a battery. Finding a good battery was one hell of a, a hoop to jump through originally. And yeah. now that's easier. And now there's so many different ESC options. So now we're just making it where make it where it's not so intimidating for someone to DIY their board. And that's I feel like we have achieved that for sure. If you yeah. watch all my YouTube videos, like if I, if you just randomly had no idea how to build a board and you sat through the M boards channel, you'd probably come out of it feeling like you could do it. That you could do it. Yeah. So you're converting like regular people into DIY people. Uh, which is which is good. Then the next thing is they come to me and they want to build a DIY power wall or they want to build a car. <laughs> I always tell people, look, yeah. everybody asks me, how, you know, like they want to convert a car, right? Because they see me driving around my converted car, right? Mm -hmm. And I go, you should probably try skateboards first. It's the same thing. It's just at a smaller yeah. scale. It's the same thing. You got to deal with the battery. Yeah. No, you got to I mean, deal with the controller, with the motors, with the mechanical aspects of it, you know. And then the 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 you know, if you get a vest, you got to like you know configure it and the whole, like it's all the same principles. If you can get through that, then I think you have a better chance of because this is gonna yeah. cost you twenty, thirty thousand dollars, right? Yeah. And what happens is a lot of people get you know they're enthusiastic at the beginning and. Halfway through it, they're like, <laughs> oh, it's too much work, yeah, I, you know? Yeah. I remember watching a, a bunch of your conversion videos, and I'm like, oh, I could do this. I'm like, no way I could do it. I'm like 18, 19 years old or something. No way I could do it. I'm like, oh, this sounds cool. You know, I started doing the math. I'm like, oh, wow, that's, you know, that's not the cheapest thing in the world. Well, yeah. I have, you know, I, and I never did it, and I never will. I have, I own a Tesla now, so I'm not, I'm, I went the opposite. It's so funny, because I'm like, DIY, DIY, electric skateboards, and then I'm like, but I'm not going to do it for cars. <laughs> I'm just like, no, no yeah. I don't think it's like way above for me what I want to deal with. And yeah. I probably could do it, but I was just like, no. It's an investment. It's like, definitely I like. I on my thing. Yeah, it's a lot. It's, it's a time investment. I'm like, ah. yeah. yeah. And then yeah, not no, it's, like. It's an investment. I knew I wasn't going to make that investment. Like I knew I wasn't going to spend the time to really learn everything enough for the car side of it. So I'm yeah. just like, you know what? I'm just going to. I'll leave it my knowledge at the skateboards, and I'm just I'll just go get an electric car. There you go. Like, I think they're awesome, and I want an electric car. But I was like, ah, I don't think building one for me is the yeah. right decision. But and then you also more... have to love it because you, what do you mean you're yeah. gonna spend three hundred, four hundred hours in some car like that? You're like, right. eh, it's okay, it's okay. But it's like so you got to right. be kind of into like the only way you're gonna do one is if you're into classic cars because those are the only things that right. are worth right. 
anything, yeah. right? Like an, an 80s Pinto is not worth anything or, you know, even a Civic. I don't know. Maybe, I don't know. Maybe, maybe a Civic from the 90s. I don't know how much those are worth. But every car kind of has a scene or whatever. Uh, yeah, but, I don't know. <laughs> but, like, right. these are, like, appreciating every year. So you're like, oh, if you buy this yeah. thing for 20 grand, you know, in 10 years it's going to be 30 grand. You know what I mean? Like, so it's like a good investment right. to fix it up and do the thing. So you, you have to be a lot of things to achieve that thing. You have to yeah. be a car nut. And then you got to have money. <laughs> And then yeah. you gotta have a lot of time, right? <laughs> and then you gotta be obsessive about it because it's gonna take too long, and you're gonna want to give up. <laughs> yeah, but escape. I mean, escape is the same thing. It's just at a smaller scale. Yeah. Smaller scale. It, it, it was so funny because I, I started riding electric skateboards much before I owned a Tesla, and immediately I get in, you know, my Model Three for the first time. I'm like, wow, this rides just like my skateboard just like because skateboard. they're both electric. I'd always been in gas before, where you know I got that delay on that on that accelerator pedal. Yeah. So I'm like, wow, this feels just like my skateboard. How just, weird! And I'm like, yeah. What a weird like thing I'm saying, but it was super strange. Well, but I was same like, oh, thing. Makes, same motors. Sense. Same thing. Yeah. Actually, sure. that's even closer because the, like the older Model S's were AC induction motors, so they didn't have permanent magnets. But your yeah. Model Three has. It, which is exactly the same. They're BLDCs. They're not exactly BLDCs, but they're a version of that. Permanent magnet motors. Uh, they react similarly to what you have on your skateboard kind of thing, right? Yeah, so it's like, it was super weird. I was like, oh, wow, there it is. <laughs> yeah. The same the same transistors that are powering their desk mm -hmm. are on that controller. You know, it's just bigger. It's just more of them. I took apart. I don't know if you saw one video that I made. I took apart a... Uh, a Model S inverter, and they use the I same MOSFETs. No. <laughs> like they're the same oh form gosh. factor. Check that out. They're not like because you can get like IGBT like packs that are like these giant things, right? They don't use those. They use like literally TO two twenties, which are like that same, slightly bigger. It's almost like the. Have you ever taken apart a um, like a like an audio amplifier? And they have all those um, MOSFETs in there. I like not. So they have like, it's almost that same type of MOSFET. It's like the same form factor. And that's what the Teslas have. I don't know the Model 3. I think the Model 3, they changed them. I haven't taken apart a, a controller yeah. for a Model 3 yet, but <laughs> but one day I will. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's pretty cool, man. Um, yeah. What about, what's... What about like long term? Do you do you see yourself doing this for a long time or cuz you know I hope so. Cuz if you're still you're growing, going. you're like, well, oh yeah. As I mean, as, I, the way I think about it is I'm only 23. So, you're I'm so going to keep riding yeah, this so as yes. long as possible. Um <laughs> yes. I, we are growing and until I see the sales start to drop, I mean, yeah we might as well keep rolling with it because like I, I would love to do it forever i mean i don't know how much life this thing has left but yeah you know well I'm for many it it peaked and that's it but for you yeah, it seems like you're right. <laughs> it opened doors yeah. for you because now there's less competition right. uh, right. people and, are not and, selling and the best part is you know even if this is like the best it's ever going to get as long as you can maintain a version of this i'm not yeah. so big where i have to do mass layoffs i'll just keep going just have a normal middle class income or whatever it is like have a normal life and and just do something I like to do and that's fine with me you yeah. know, I don't need anything to be crazy I don't need to make you know a 70 million dollar boosted board company I don't what I mean of course I'll take that but I'm not gonna you know whatever yeah but, you know we're gonna just keep moving and you know we're best case scenario if we just continue to grow a little bit every year and and bring better products to the to market and make yeah. repairing boards easier and yeah. Did, have you ever thought about uh, other, like, uh, micro-mobility vehicles, like scooters? So I, I registered the domain mbikes. <laughs> oh, ah, okay. Just imagine. Oh, bikes are I, a I huge haven't done thing. anything with it yet because they're huge, bikes. but I don't know enough about them. So I would bikes. feel, like, not good making a company yet about that before I knew enough to do it. You know, if I'm going to yeah. do it, I'm not going to do it like M boards where I just kind of fell into it i'm gonna do it with some real research and like yeah. purpose 
Oh, I'd so to, it, to give you an idea, I have a warehouse right now full of, like with like two thousand e bike wheels that I'm selling super cheap. <laughs> I watched your like little robot video you were trying. To work oh out. yeah, I'm you trying it. That working out. Yeah. Because I it takes so long because they because I'm selling them so cheap, right? That I'm like I'm not gonna buy a three dollar box for the stupid wheel, like. Yeah. There's no way, right? Like, and then it takes forever, and then the tape, and I'm like, I need to figure out how to like do it quickly so I don't have to hype the price of this thing. Cause I, cause there's too many of them. I'm like, literally, it's like a whole full warehouse full of them, right? So it's like, <laughs> and they're a good value. These are like two hundred dollar, like, like, oh wow, wheels, yeah. right? Yeah. Like they're high quality and they're like not too beat up. They're good. So I'm like, it's a good value. So I know the day that I make a video where I show people how to make a DIY e bike battery, I mean e mm -hmm. bike. I know there's gonna be hundreds and hundreds of sales. So I can't have my people just be like take two weeks to ship a hundred things or right. you know what i mean like so i need to figure yeah. out i'm trying to get ahead of it like i need you to be able to like wrap this things up like in you know 40 seconds yeah. or something so that slap a label get them out the door you know yeah. so we can oh, move on there. to the next I've thing been there trying to catch up with shipping it's not fun <laughs> so the other thing is uh yeah there's a huge market you know because everybody's going bankrupt right um what was it Uber got out of the business, so they got rid of all their bikes. They oh, got wow! I didn't know got that. Thousands. Wow! I got six thousand batteries from e-bikes that I sold. Damn. Uh, the in the last six months, and then I got six thousand the scooter batteries that I have, and I still have like five thousand of them. So I've only sold. I haven't sold like two thousand. So maybe I'm gonna. Have, so I probably only have like forty five hundred or something. Like that. Um. But as far as I can see this next year, like my acquisition for batteries, oh, my God, it's just like crazy amounts of these because they're all they're all getting out of the business. Like, you know, this COVID thing. And I don't think those companies figure out how to monetize the scooters and the e-bikes. And so now you're pairing it with the... Uh, with COVID, it's just they're kind of getting out of that stuff. And so they're all ending up at the recycling centers. And then I'm picking them up because the recycling centers are selling them to me. Um, so there's a huge market of that. So there's, I think there's a, a big opportunity to do something with e-bikes and scooters. Because now my business is like to promote my, my store and then to sell product there. And there I'm selling product that is good value. Yeah. Right? So batteries... Typically have been right. really expensive, but I can get them so cheap now that I can sell them at like a hundred dollars, a hundred and twenty dollars a kilowatt hour, and make money. Okay. <laughs> this is where yeah. we're at right wow. now, right? So it's like whoa, yeah. and like these packs, they're 10s, and they're already put together. They have a BMS, and we figure out the BMS. We have like a little Arduino that controls and talks to them and has the handshake and everything. So these are like not only super affordable batteries, but they're super easy to now put them into work. Like you can literally connect this thing, put like our little dongle that I'm still working on, and then you should be able to connect that into an e-bike, and you're running. And you have a $57, like it's a wow. $300 battery, right? right? And it's like good quality because it's got a NCR, Panasonic NCR 18650B okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. cells, you know, or the LG M MH1s. Uh, so these okay. are like top of the line like cells and they're already put into a pack with the bms all this stuff and it's just it just kind of works and th this is like the most expensive the batteries are going to be like because there's more and more batteries coming down because everything has batteries right so so i'm like oh this is a good idea to like do something i didn't want to sell like scooters but since i got a few hundred of them and they were like in such good shape I'm like, okay, let's sell them. And, yeah, they're selling like crazy. People just want to ride those things, like, you know. Yeah. So there's – you should probably think about that. More and more just in the streets. Yeah. Yeah, I've been seeing them all like my neighbor – like in the suburbs almost. People are taking them to, like, work. I'm like, hey, what gets you there? <laughs> <laughs> Which ones? The uh, – just, like, the commercially available ones? Yeah, yeah. I, I can never tell which scooter it is. I'm not – Versed yeah, enough in the scooter world to know exactly which one it is, but 
Dude, I'm, I'll send you one. I'm going to send you one of these ones that we have here. It's, uh, y you, once you write one, you're like, oh, I see, I see the appeal here. Okay, I see the thing. And then you see one on the street, like, oh, that's the other type. There's only a few of them. Okay. You're yeah. right. There's only like right. several versions and they're different colors and they're different things and different makers. But there's like, and then also like, there's all the cheap ones and then there's like the decent ones. <laughs> and then yeah. the decent ones, there's only like three different models. Uh, and you can you can tell them apart, you know, after a while. You're like, oh, that's the whatever. That's the, the bigger one. And that's the middle one, you know. <laughs> gotcha. But they're cool. Uh, and I think there's probably a huge opportunity. You should probably look into that. In the, just because, again, like what you're offering is value, mm -hmm. right? You're offering value to, to customers. And I think since this there's a surplus right now of these, high value like these are really expensive uh scooters like these are like 800 dollars scooters right um oh, yeah no those are high wow yeah and the ones that i got the batteries the ones that they all tore them apart those mm -hmm. are like 20 i think they're like i think those are like 1600 dollars scooters because they're the bigger ones the ones that have 40 cells so they wow. do something like 20 miles of range 23 miles of range uh, and they have the eight inch wheels and stuff like that. So oh, I got yeah, yeah, yeah. 6,000 of those batteries in pallets, already palletized. So that means they, they broke down 6,000 of those. And they were, there was nothing wrong with them. They were all good. Like I've yet to see a bad battery, which means that all the scooters wow. were good. Uh, the only reason yeah. why they, they got rid of them is because Uber's out of the business. You know, they don't, they sold it to whatever. They don't so sold it anymore. Yeah. Yeah. And the the bikes too. It was the same thing. The bikes, a lot of them were brand new, and they just crushed them all. And the guy that I, that one of my sources, he didn't want to crush the 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 motors and the wheels, so he saved them. But he can't, you know. He's like, how do you sell them? He couldn't sell them, you know. And I'm like, I'll sell them. I'll make a, a thing, a video, or whatever, you know. And like, I'll figure out. The market's there. You just gotta figure out how to tap into it a little bit, you know. And, yeah, and, totally. And someone like you already has that market because it's people who are looking into riding some kind of, you know, yeah. mobility vehicle. Um, but yeah, I, yeah. I think you, you have, you're in a good position. I think you're probably going to gonna grow uh, this year. Yeah, it, it looks really good so far. We're up like 40-something percent so far year to date, 2021. So it's, we're looking really good um you know, we've just you know imported tons of stuff for the new the new boards so all that's paid for so now we're just sitting back and waiting for launch day and as soon as that count like we'll be able to start making better moves as far as more future plans we are you know, catching in all the investments we have sitting in a warehouse right now yeah but, uh, yeah i'm excited to start like expanding and everything like that but yeah well that's cool well all the luck in the world man um where can people follow you, uh, your your adventures and your product, you know, announcements and stuff like that? So you can follow Mboards at Mboards Co., uh, which is like our domain name is Mboards.co. So our Instagram is just delete that period out and push it together. And that's that would be our Instagram handle. Oh, um, Twitter, I Twitter, Facebook, all that is all the same. So, yeah, our website is Mboards.co. Um, all of our kits and parts and all that are up there. And... Uh, yeah, you can oh, follow us on Instagram is mainly where we kind of share mo mostly everything. And then YouTube is where all of our videos are. I mean, that's our main, yeah. our main, uh, you know. And what's what's the channel on that one? Uh, M-Boards. Yep. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Yep. If you just Google it, you'll find it. <laughs> you search it on YouTube, you'll find us for sure. Yeah. And are you still posting that on uh, kit.co or you you got not you gave up on that company? <laughs> not <laughs> too much. They were it's such a, a mess, right? <laughs> oh, man, because they were. They, I, it's funny when I first started on Kit. I actually got a call from like the owner of Kit. No like, way! Like, because I was had, because I was getting like a couple million clicks. On my yes, list. I saw that Kit. I was like, I'm like, how are you beating me? Because I wasn't getting that many. I was like, how's it possible? You know, you're selling <laughs> dumb skateboards. No, I was like, yeah, but I saw that your yeah. kid was no, getting right. yeah. millions of views. Yeah, killing it. So, so, so the owner of Kit called me. I was like, "Hey, how can we make a Kit better?" I'm like, I gave him a list of things, and he implemented a few of them. But then they oh, ended up selling out. They ended up selling Kit to uh, Patreon. I want to say. Yes, Patreon and got it. They ruined it. 
Then they <laughs> sold it to someone else who further ruined it more. So my kit's still there because I have a few links in some older videos that I just haven't updated yet. But like I'm not really using any affiliate links because almost everything is running directly to my website. So the affiliate oh. part of it doesn't help me too much anymore. But yeah. it's just there to park links pretty much. Yeah. But but did you win and change it? Because remember, it was kit.com. Yeah. And then it was kit.co. I did do that when they did that. I so did you did change that change. Yes. I couldn't do it because, see, I have like hundreds of videos. Yeah. And I'm like, I don't got the time. Like, you know, so, some of those videos are only getting like 20 views a day. I'm like, I'm not going to go and spend like hours and hours a day, right? Like, or, or there was a, some kind of like the, tool. Yeah. So I was doing all of my links through Genius. I don't know if you've ever heard of Genius Link. It's oh. literally a web, like a web address forwarder. Yeah. I had all of my uh, kit links going through that, so I only had to edit one, really one link, and it updated all uh, of so We are out. using uh, another one of those services, but I, as far as I know, it doesn't let us do that. Oh, you know what? We don't have the pro version. I bet you if you get the pro version, you, you could do that. Man, oh, okay. I could have done that. So now what we're going to do is going to use uh, some kind of like tool that will allows you to automate like changing so it basically goes into all your videos because i want to change all that and redirect those all those to my website now yeah definitely because like a single video doesn't create probably a lot of click-throughs but 600 videos then that's a yes, pretty substantial definitely. and I, right now i'm sending them to kit.com which is not even related to the thing it's like some medical website stupid thing or something oh shoot yeah because okay. remember they lost the domain I didn't realize why they changed it. They lost the domain. Oh, so they okay. bought the company. They bought the website and company, but somehow it didn't include the domain. Uh -huh. <laughs> so I'm like, what kind of a genius person buys kit.com and not own kit.com? <laughs> they must they must have got some substantial offer for the domain name that they just couldn't part like they had to sell it out. Like it must have not made sense. I don't know. It doesn't make any sense to me. I, I'm like, I'm not like, sticking but... around. I'm like, if you can't even keep your domain, like this is literally hundreds of <laughs> like links. This is just me. Imagine like everybody that was doing it. They got some good, like big influencers in there. And that was also kind of mad because they, yeah. I was doing pretty good numbers there. Like I also had some kids that had a million of views at one point. Right. And like yeah. they would get like some other little YouTubers. I remember like some other guys that, that I like went and looked them up or whatever. And I'm like, why are they on the front page? Like they right. were like promoting them and they were working page. with them and stuff. I'm like, come on. Like I'm pushing so many. I was like, whatever, I'm out. <laughs> so they pushed me to do uh, my own website. <laughs> it's much better. It was good because do having your own website, it's, yeah. it's, better, it's better. Yeah, you capture everything in there. Yeah. And so you're basically doing the same thing. Yeah. You're, you're making videos and I then you just link to your website. We are pretty much the exact same person, it sounds like, except <laughs> slightly different categories. Different market. Yeah, different market. Yeah, just but, different market. But it all, it's all started very similar, and it's going pretty similarly as well. Yeah, <laughs> so. but you're so much younger. See, I would I would trade you because I would I would want to be 23 <laughs> again. Like, you're so ahead of the game. It took me till I was, like, in my late 30s to figure this out. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I ran businesses all throughout middle school and high school doing nonsense, just whatever. So I've always had that, like, drive to, like, do my own thing. And oh. now I just let, you know, this, which is obviously much bigger than selling gum at school. Like, that's, yeah. you know. <laughs> yeah, you're going to be so much better equipped to, to the next business. Because I bet you you're not going to keep doing this forever. You're going to get tired of it. Yeah. That's the other yeah. thing that you don't see. Like when you're young, you think like, oh, if I could do this forever, you know, and you're like, no, nobody could. Yeah. I mean, it takes a special person to do the same thing over and over every day. Like say, eventually you wake up one day and you're like, I'm, I don't want it. This is not fun anymore. I'm going to do something else. <laughs> yeah. And if you're, I don't know, lucky or unlucky, I don't know if it's a, it's, if it's a, a gift or a curse, you <laughs> slowly start shifting into other things. Like you, your interests just start going some rails, you know, you're like, oh, I got to do this thing. I'm going to make these videos, but let me look over here, you know, and then halfway through the day, you're like doing some other thing, you know, and, and then yeah. you do that for the next five years, you figure out how to make money. 
<laughs> yeah, I mean, I had a I had a f whole photography videography business prior, and I just couldn't like Mboards just completely overtook it. You know, my ah. warehouse originally started out as a photo studio, um, and I just needed the space, so I just closed that whole thing. I just don't really do it that much anymore yeah. on the side once in a while, but like I just needed the warehouse space for Mboards, so that's kind of how we moved into this, and now this is my full time thing. Like Mboards ah. is my side hustle for a long time, and now it's like it's, this it's is the it. main thing. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, That's you'll crazy. develop something else. You'll yeah. you'll find your love again for taking video or pictures or something, or yeah. you're gonna get into my, uh, crypto mining or so, I don't know. Who knows what you're gonna <laughs> get into? Yeah. <laughs> you're gonna start repairing Teslas or you know wrapping them. I don't, who knows? <laughs> the future is bright for you though, because you're young and you're learning, and yeah, you're you're Thank on you. the right foot. <laughs> All right, Mike. Well, thank you for joining <laughs> me. It's been interesting. Um, and uh, yeah, yeah, we'll have you again. Yeah, once thank, you, oh, thank you for having me. Yeah, once you uh, once you start sure. selling your new thing, and you make your you know, when you sell sell your first million board, we'll have you back. <laughs> 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 you know, I don't know, whatever. We'll hit Sounds whenever good. you you hit your next big target. You know. Um, and okay. so, and I'll have a, I'll bring an Ethernet cable next time. There you go. Yes. Or get a couple of phones or something, tether them together. I don't know. <laughs> no, you know what's going to happen? Maybe in the future, we could even have you here because I have a studio. Yeah. Like I, I rented to. this whole space and I have the podcast room and we have the control room. We haven't had a single person here. Oh, actually one person. I think one person. But yeah, yeah COVID, right? But yeah, I want to yeah. start having people like, you know. And so that we can do this. I mean, this is really good and everything, except for sometimes the, the audio thing, right? But I don't know. I gotta. I want to start doing where you do it in front, and I don't know. I, I think some people say that there's there's yes. something there that's missing when you're not in front of each other and having conversations. So we shall see. Definitely. Yeah. All right. All right, man. Thank you, and Sounds we'll good. see you in the future. All right. <laughs>